you're such a genuine gym. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is a survived case about Kim Na Young, who was kidnapped at eight years old. Now, I will warn you, this case is brutal and involves a child. It is one that is hard to hear, but I find it necessary to talk about due to the infuriating trial and outcome and the release of a criminal due to the worst excuse in the world. This is also about Korea's most hated man, but more importantly, it's about a survivor. I also want to thank our sponsor, Magellan TV. They are a documentary streaming service that I absolutely love working with, and they are a longtime sponsor of this channel because I find that there are so many documentaries on this service that I have never heard of that I get to watch through Magellan, and one that I have been watching recently is actually this one. It's called Great Bank Heist, and if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with heist movies, but this documentary shows that sometimes the films are actually actually not as crazy and dramatic as the real robberies. You get to go inside the robbery and the investigation of three different cases and it's so interesting to watch. But if this one isn't for you, I can almost bet you can find a documentary that piques your interest among the many genres that Magellan has. If you would like a one month free trial to watch whatever you want, go to try.magellantv.com slash Brooke McKenna. I also want to thank the Dark Side of Soul podcast. They are actually hosts that are from Korea and so they were able to, you know, go into depth about the laws over there and just about the culture and community and how people really reacted at the time of this case. So it was really interesting to listen to. I will have them linked down below. Below. Now let's get back to the story. So it was 2008 in South Korea and an eight-year-old girl went to school in Anzan. She was actually on her way that December, just walking her usual route. She did this all the time. It was something that was not unusual for her at all, except it would forever change from a peaceful part of her routine to a very traumatic experience. On December 11th, Nayoung would find herself walking to school, starting her journey, and she would never make it there. The next time she was seen, she was crawling out of a church's bathroom, bleeding and screaming for help. She was on the verge of dying and she was able to scream for help from strangers who ended up calling an ambulance and getting her to the hospital. And once she was there, the doctors realized that she was in even worse condition than they thought that she would be and she would need to go under intense surgery that would last about eight hours. Kim Young was not her real name and in fact, we do not know her real name. You see, she was a minor at this time and her identity was kept private and she was given an alias so that this case could be talked about and the victim could be named and given an identity other than just the victim. But although I completely respect this and I'm so happy that they kept her name out of it so she wouldn't have to relive it and see her name being thrown about in the media, it also means that we don't know very much about her other than the fact that she was a victim. And you guys know how much I like to really focus on the fact that these people are just that, people. They are not victims. They had lives prior to their trauma and they will have lives after their trauma, but their life will be more difficult after the trauma. But there's nothing I can really tell you about her other than she was this innocent child who was brutally attacked. Nae Young did survive this surgery, however, she was told that she was going to have permanent damage on her lower half and it was said that she actually had a third degree disability. Now, she was actually in need of a bag to even use the bathroom at this point and Nae Young had talked to investigators and told them that an older man had come up to her saying that she needed to go to church and that is when he drug her to a nearby church's bathroom and took off his pants. Now he tried to put his privates in her mouth. She refused and that is when he began to beat her and punch her in the face, biting her on the cheek and then choking her until she was unconscious. She would be sexually assaulted multiple times after this and a toilet plunger was used on her 
as well. It was said that her body was so badly assaulted that her insides were hanging out. When she woke up, she was lying on the ground in the bathroom and a stall and cold water was running all around her that was from the sink that was on and using all the strength that this little girl could muster, she crawled out of that bathroom and she screamed for help. She saved herself that day. Thankfully, this abuser had left DNA and fingerprints at the crime scene and they were able to make an arrest two days later. This was a 56, 57 year old named Chodo Soon and he was immediately saying he was not guilty, but they also found blood on him and it was immediately tested and found to be that of Nay Young's. But while she was still healing in the hospital from this surgery she had had, Investigators then thought it was a good idea to have to bring her into the police station so she could listen to this interrogation of this abuser. She had to sit there and watch her abuser being interrogated and saying that he had nothing to do with it. Now remember, this is an eight-year-old who had just been attacked by this man and was then hearing him say he was completely innocent of all of the charges, even when she was saying that was the right guy. She was in pain mentally and physically, but she still told investigators what they wanted to know. However, she went through the story and she had to redo it four different times because they would forget to record it or the machine wasn't working. And so she was reliving this horrible experience over and over and over again. And all the while, her parents were getting even more and more angry because she was telling them what they needed to know. She was telling them exactly what she had seen. She was being brave enough to do this and it just seemed like they were taking advantage of the fact that she was so willing to talk and tell her story. But the man that the investigators had in custody was actually a husband and his wife claimed that he was a really good guy. In fact, the wife said, cooking rice and side dishes, cleaning the home, and all the household work. My husband has done it for 20 years. He has never vented his anger, and he has been hailed a polite person. But as it turned out, she didn't know much about her husband. You see, Chodo Soon was born on October 18th of 1952, and I couldn't find much about his childhood or his family. However, I did find that by the time he got to middle school, he dropped out altogether and began a life of crime. His first crime was stealing a bicycle, and he was caught for this, but because he was so young, nothing was done, and he was free. He was released. However, he didn't learn his lesson and he didn't stop there. Now that's something I want to say it kind of happens a lot in these cases where they go on to do these horrific things. It seems like because they are younger, a lot of these, you know, killers or abusers, they will be told that, oh, you're just a kid, you know, you didn't mean it, you won't do it again, and they don't have any sort of punishment, and they sort of see this as, well, I didn't get punished before, so I probably won't get punished again, and they escalate. And they continue doing things because they suddenly feel like they're invincible. Not all people do this. Some people do learn their lesson and don't ever do it again. But I do think that that's something that needs to be looked into is not just looking at a, you know, minor who is also a criminal as, you know, being, oh, innocent, they didn't know any better, and actually maybe giving them punishment and it doesn't have to be this huge punishment but at least some punishment to show them that they can't just get away with anything they want to do because only two years later he was caught extorting money from a street stall and then he was sentenced to a year and six months inside of a youth detention center five years later he was of course you know released since that past crime but he was put back in jail for eight months due to theft it only got worse from there. You see, when Chodo Soon was 31 years old, he was a grown man. He sexually assaulted what was believed to be his first victim. This was a 19-year-old who worked nearby his home, and he was caught and given three years, but this victim had to be in treatment for 30 days. She needed to recover physically for a whole month, but mentally for a whole lifetime. That's how long it would take. It's not something that is a few treatment plans and therapy sessions. It's something that lives with these victims forever and that's what he did to her. Then he was released and he assaulted a bar hostess 
and was then fined for this, but at the age of 39 was his first murder. Choto Soon had assaulted a 60-year-old man because this man was praising the president Chun Doo Han, or Chun Doo Wan, and he beat this man to death and was only given two years at a psychiatric hospital due to the fact that he was drinking at the time and seemed feeble-minded. Now, he was also said to be a preacher during these times of these crimes, and he had 17 prior criminal convictions. This all happened while he was with his wife, well, most of them when he was older, of course. But his wife continued to stand by his side to go visit him in prison, and Choto Soon soon began to say that he didn't remember anything that had happened to Na Young because of the alcohol and that he only committed the crime due to being intoxicated. Yet it didn't matter if he was drunk or not when this happened, Na Young was still permanently disabled to the point of needing eight months of treatment at least. She also had to undergo surgery to get an artificial anus to repair what was damaged and the physical damage wasn't even the worst part. She also began suffering from severe mental distress and depression as well. This completely changed the course of her life. She was only eight years old and now had to deal with this. And this changed the way she viewed the world as well. I mean, Nae Young shouldn't have had to be so strong or so resilient. She should have been able to live naive, carefree, and no excuse could make up for that. However, to the criminal justice system in Korea, it did. The excuse did make up for it. You see, Na Young was forced to testify at this trial even though she had already said during the interrogation to investigators exactly what had happened over and over again. They did not record her statement or put it on file or show it at the trial. So she had to testify and at this point she was still recovering as well because this happened pretty quickly with, you know, the arrest and the trial and everything. And the eight-year-old was then facing her abuser telling everybody what he did to her. And this is hard for someone of any age, but imagine this tiny girl having no idea what happened to her. She didn't know why it was her that he chose to do this to, and suddenly she had to look at him again. She should have never even been allowed near him, but she knew she had to do it to get him in jail. So she did. But Choto Soon had already written a letter to the judge saying, I am not the type of sick monster who rapes an eight-year-old girl. He wrote this over 300 times and sent it to the judge. His interrogation footage was also not shown at trial. And then the defense lawyer asked Nae Young one question when she was on the stand. A question she didn't know was a double-edged sword. This was, did you smell alcohol? on him. Na Young, being this honest, pure soul, said yeah, she did, because it was the honest answer. After hearing this, the excuse of Choto Soon being too intoxicated to be able to stop himself from sexually assaulting an eight-year-old girl seemed to be confirmed, and he was then given 15 years in prison. That's it. But that's not the worst part because he appealed this case and during the second trial was only given 12 years. Now, the reason that his sentence is so low is that in Korea, they actually have two laws that really made this excuse okay. And the first one is called Jo Chi Gam Yoon. I'll write it on the screen because I know I'm butchering it. And I'm so sorry, but this law basically says that substance abuse impairs the mental state. And then there's another law that's called the Sim Sin Miyak that says if you are mentally impaired or mentally weak, that you aren't held responsible for the crimes. So basically these two combined meant that Choto Soon was seen as not being in his right mind due to the alcohol and therefore it wasn't as bad. Now, if you are enraged by this as I am, just know we are not alone because the entire community in Korea were just as outraged. Many began to file petitions to get his sentence to be a life sentence so he was never released. There were also petitions to get rid of both of these laws, but they were both rejected. And then the public began to ask for a complete 
retrial, but this didn't come either. Over, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people were signing petitions to change this outcome for this eight-year-old girl. On Wednesday, the government gave an official response saying that though by law a retrial is not allowed, it would do its best to protect its citizens. There were also requests that his, you know, personal identity and details and his face were revealed because they were all being kept private at this point. I mean, he was getting the same luxuries as the victim was. You know, of course the victim's face as an eight-year-old girl should be covered up, but why was he getting this as well? This whole time nobody knew what he looked like and he was not being reprimanded in the media and in the public for what he had done. Throughout this whole time his wife continued to stand by him and showed him support as an innocent man even though he was anything but. Nay Young had been through so much but she was also put through an absurd amount of things that could have been prevented. You see, during the trial that she should have never been a part of because she had already been interviewed and told her story, she still had 80% of her organs that were bleeding. She had to wear a pad because it like this, you know, this like diaper pad basically because her organs were continuing to bleed. She had to sit there on the stand facing her abuser, answering questions she had already answered and being, you know, ridiculed and being told that she had to answer this question about smelling alcohol on him, like that made it any better what she had gone through. Well, she didn't have the training, she shouldn't have had to have the training to know what answering that question would do to her. She was brutally honest about what happened to her and that's what she got in return. Nae Young's parents were so enraged and they actually ended up filing a lawsuit against the prosecution for psychological distress of their daughter. Three years later, she was given $13 million in compensation, which seems amazing in theory, but no amount of money can take away what she'd gone through and what she's still going through especially with what was going to happen next. You see, at this point, Nae Young was said to be about 70% recovered. She was going back to school. She was really just starting to, you know, feel as much like herself again as she could. And she had people surrounding her that loved her, that were supporting her. She could even get close to the crime scene without it throwing her into distress. And she had found small glimpses of peace again but this would all be destroyed. Because even though she was getting older, she continued to watch cartoons because anytime she watched the news, she would actually pass out if they mentioned anything about sexual assault and she had to avoid it altogether. But Nae Young had made such an impact in the community that there was actually a song written about her called Nae young by Ali. And they were so touched by her story that they wrote a song about her intertwined with their own experience with sexual assault. And it was really, you know, a touching song, but the community was so protective over Nae Young that they actually forced Ali to get rid of this song because they thought that it was, you know, disrespectful to Nae Young and Ali eventually apologized. But that just shows you how much the community fought for Nae Young and for her peace of mind. They felt like she at least deserved that when she wasn't given a proper trial and proper justice. But what would have everybody up in arms the most was what would happen in 2020. That's right, just last year. You see, Chodo Soon's sentence was coming to an end. And his face was finally revealed to the public, but only because the public was going to have the chance to come face to face with him again, just walking about as a free man. Protests began in the community. People were lying on the ground in the middle of the streets. They were holding signs and they were calling the city office in Anson, asking for the mayor to ban his return or reveal his address so everybody knew exactly where he lived. When it became clear that nobody was stopping this release, Nae Young's father actually decided to write himself and 
He wrote a letter saying the government pledged 11 years ago that Cho would be permanently isolated from society. I believe that you will keep that promise. The problem was he had already been tried. He had already been given that short sentence for his crime. And due to double jeopardy, there was nothing more they could do. They were told that he would be wearing an anklet for the next seven years, which would track everywhere he went. He would also have his address be made to the public and he would have a probation officer monitoring him 24 seven but this officer wasn't going to be living with him. This didn't make anyone feel better though and the community members were actually interviewed about what they thought about this, if they heard about the case and here are some of their opinions and thoughts now. ...ngangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangang
would go to and from school just like Nae Young had. Due to so much bad press, there was actually a bill that was passed called Choto Soon Law, which banned those convicted of sexual assaulting minors from leaving their residence during nights and also during the times when children would be going to and from school. They also obviously aren't allowed to go to school areas, but like I said, this didn't make anybody feel better. They felt like if this person, this monster could do what he did to an eight-year-old girl, there was no stopping him. And Naeyoung's family did end up leaving town prior to him being released, but her father said, is it our reality that the offender is protected in the name of human rights and the victim has to go into hiding? He said that if Cho had really done self-reflecting, then he wouldn't have chosen to live in the same neighborhood as his victim and also of a school. The father then offered Chodo basically a settlement of money equivalent to around $20,000 to leave this area. He said that he will go into debt to make sure this man moves. But it's not said that Chodo has, you know, said that he will do this or take in the offer. He just went to move back in with his wife like nothing ever happened. But Nayong's father has been very outspoken about this whole thing, especially because this man has been released and he feels horrible for not being able to do anything for his daughter but i think what he's doing as far as speaking out against the injustices is doing so much for his daughter and i'm sure his daughter is so so happy i'm sure nae young is so proud to be her father's daughter and he kind of went into the experience that she has been through over the years and he said, our family can't enjoy watching TV together anymore. When news breaks out about a sexual crime, my daughter faints right away. That is why my daughter can't watch the news at all. She used to have a TV in her dorm when she was in college, but asked to take that TV away as well. When she comes home during the break, she can only watch cartoons that children watch. I feel she is becoming socially isolated because she doesn't watch much TV. At first, my daughter seemed like a soulless zombie that you see in the movies. She was blank all the time. She had to receive treatment twice a week for four years until she graduated from elementary school. We couldn't leave the town of Anzan because of the help the teacher's parents parents and classmates gave to our daughter. They all understood her situation. That's why we couldn't leave. He had actually ended up quitting his job and giving up on his business to take care of her, drive her to counseling and treatment sessions, and the whole family began to carry walkie-talkies just in case they needed to contact one another. But they also carried gas guns just in case they had to protect themselves. There was a movie made about this story called Hope, which is where all of the pictures come from of her, of, you know, the incident that had happened. They are not real pictures. They are from this movie. Something that shows you just how young and how vulnerable and how scary this was. Nae Young, who was the incredible, brave, strong girl who survived all this, is a hero. And to be put through this kind of trauma and fight every day to survive and then be forced to leave the one place you feel comfortable, that's an unfathomable amount of pain to put one person through. The real Nayoung, not just the victim who was given this name, but the young girl who fought for her life and the young woman who continues to persevere is a survivor. She is incredibly beautifully strong. One that everybody should look up to. And a reminder that sex offenders, especially those who go after minors, need to be kept off the streets for good. And this should have never happened. In the words of her father, now the victim has to be on the run. But I have one question for you to ponder. How is it that women who are drunk and get sexually assaulted are told that they deserve it? But the rapist who is drinking is told they couldn't help it. Tell me how that makes sense. Because it doesn't. I don't know if there is anything we can do in this case to, to help Nayoung. I don't know if there's any petitions. I will look and I will link them below if there is. But because of double jeopardy, he can't be tried again for the same crime. So that means that to, in order to get him back in prison, he would have to do something like this again. And why in the world would we wish for that? I think that the most we can do is help fight for the ban of these laws that are over in Korea. I will see if there's anything that I can put below to fight for that. But overall, 
whether it's in Korea, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in the US, sex crimes are looked at as lesser. I think that they are equally as horrible. Murder victims have to lose their lives and sexual assault victims have to live with what had happened in their lives and both deserve justice. And these monsters who can do either of these things, they don't deserve to be free. I'm sorry that this is such a dark, deep case. Um, I was requested to do this and I wasn't going to because it is so brutal. People need to hear about the injustices of the world and about what people go through every single day when people just want to overlook other people's pain because it didn't happen to them. Naeung deserves to be validated in her trauma. Deserves to be told what she had gone through wasn't okay because a man was too drunk. It didn't take away her pain that he was drunk. So why should he have gotten a lesser sentence? Because he was drunk. You guys know that survived cases are my favorite to do because of the victims. And I will leave a whole playlist down below of more survived cases. A lot of those are a lot less brutal than this one if you need a little more of an uplifting story, but I thought this one was just as important to share. So don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye.